The last broadcast is a low-budget mockumentary found footage hybrid about the mysterious murder of a group of documentary filmmakers in the woods. It comes from a time of transition in horror and even predates the Blair Witch Project, so let's take a look and see how it holds up. Welcome everyone to Screams After Midnight, I am Pierre, and joining me for this broadcast is Tim. Hello, thank you for agreeing to be in my documentary. I'm <laughs> making my... a documentary about the review <laughs> that we're about to do. <laughs> this is a horror movie podcast, we get together and we talk about a horror movie and the, the teasies probably give it away, if not the title of the video or episode, which is <laughs> <laughs> the last broadcast from 1998. Uh, this is just kind of a random one. Um, we, we wanted to do things in between recording Exorcist reviews and I was like, Tim, I don't know what to do. And Tim said, I've been meaning to watch the last broadcast and I was mm -hmm. like, sounds fine, I've not seen that either, let's do it. Why not? Mm -hmm. I've heard of it people talk about it sometimes so let's let's, let's see what it's like <laughs> uh sometimes credited as the original found footage movie and i say sometimes mm -hmm. because some people will credit cannibal holocaust some people will hold it another little bit for blair witch because this is kind of like half found footage but i'd argue probably closer to mockumentary overall uh i mean we'll get into it i i don't think <laughs> I'd really call this found footage, but I mean... Uh, yeah, I, I, there's uh, definitely parts of it, obviously, that are what yeah. found footage mm -hmm. is going to kind of become. You know, like, there's there's elements of mm -hmm. it in there. Uh, I'd probably but, say the... Uh, I, I think the McPherson tape was even before this, though, that uh, oh. the UFO found footage movie, which... um, Yeah, I would put probably... Uh, yeah, definitely. Well, I'd, I'd definitely put that above this, but then... um. I mean, it, it's hard to, to argue against a Cannibal Holocaust not really kind of being the, you know, forerunner into that. Yeah, well, I've not seen Cannibal Holocaust, uh, so I, I don't know <laughs> how much I agree that it's found footage. I just know that I've heard that That's it's true, found yeah. footage. <laughs> so. Yeah, I mean, me too. Yeah, I, I actually haven't seen it either because the, you know, the very obvious reasons uh, that have made me not want to watch it, but... Hmm. I don't know. I feel like maybe like at some point, maybe I, I do have to watch it. I just, I, and I'm, I'm not really ever <laughs> in the mood. Well, I mean, to. there's, there's the, the newer director's cut that cuts out all the animal cruelty. So, I mean, there's yeah. a version of it to watch. Uh, That's true. To, yeah. to get around that stuff, which is fine. Um, so maybe, maybe it's a show, a show movie at some point, just to sort of cross it off the list and say sure. we've done it. <laughs> but yeah, so the last broadcast, 1998, a year before Blair Witch, um, I did also, the year before Iron Giant? <laughs> Phantom Menace. <laughs> I I thought you were at least going to say a horror movie. I thought, like I I'm why is that relevant? I think it was one of the biggest movies of the year. <laughs> <laughs> um, yes. But you see that there was a reason why I I mentioned that it's a year before Blair Witch. You see that there's a connection between them. There's like a mm -hmm. Yeah. Force. <laughs> <laughs> Force. <laughs> yeah. Actually, one of the little bits of trivia I noticed uh, looking this up is that some people often miscredit this as, like, a an influence on Blair Witch. But Blair um... Witch started shooting before this movie came out, so... Suck it. <laughs> so it's just it's just factually, it's not true. Like, they're, they're separate yeah. movies that were made independently of each other and uh, have <laughs> nothing to do with each other. Uh, other <laughs> than, of course, the obvious comparisons because of the found footage elements and... Just the, mm -hmm. you know, the, the plots about characters getting into the woods and something bad happens, you know, and they're filming it. <laughs> so that's very Blair Witchy, obviously. But Blair Witch, of course, is very chronological. Blair Witch is, like, these characters getting into the woods and following the events and them getting slowly more scared. Last Broadcast is very much a mockumentary. It's got a narrator. It's got uh, mm -hmm. interviews with, like, you know, not real people, obviously, but, uh, you know, the fake versions of police and like people mm -hmm. who knew the victims and the, the potential killer and things like that. It very much looks and feels like a, a documentary you might see in cable in the nineties. Yes. Um, yes. Yes. You know, very authentically, I would say just from what I remember mm -hmm. seeing bits and pieces of those types of things. Oh, sure. Uh, and what, one of the things that I did note is that this is the first feature length movie that is apparently shot um, either mostly or entirely with consumer grade equipment, meaning, um, 
you know, like, these days this is normal for someone to buy a DSLR and go out and try to make a movie, and it can look quite good if you know what we're doing. You know, if, mm-hmm. if you know how to light it properly and get some decent actors, you might actually make something decent with it. Uh, but it was much harder in the 90s, right? You know, you, you had to, like, deal with crappy videotape and shit like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, but what's interesting is because it's using stuff that's a bit closer to what cable TV was being made out of, you know, stuff like crime documentaries, it looks quite authentic for <laughs> what it's trying to pretend to be. So, you know, uh, that's worth something. Uh, but yeah, the, the plot of the movie is investigating three murders that happen in the woods. Four men went into the woods to make a sort of early internet show slash like local access cable show about you know it's called factor fiction it's about going after urban myths and things like that and three of them wind up dead the fourth one is blamed for the murders and this documentary is looking into all the evidence and you know maybe either try to prove or disprove what the general consensus is and that's the basic premise so i'll leave it there we'll start spoiler free of course as we always do uh, and we'll give you a warning before we get into the into the spoileries. So, neither of us had seen this before. This was a first time watch. Uh, we'd sort of heard of it in passing because you know it's got a bit of bit of a cult status. So, Tim, what did you think yeah. of the last broadcast? Um, it's a little tough because I wouldn't say I'm like super impressed. Like I I wasn't super into the story, but uh. <sighs> There was, like, enough interesting things about it, mostly from kind of, like, a, you know, like, a cultural standpoint from, like, you know, the the time that it was made and, you know, again, using these techniques that, you know, uh, were pretty, you know, like, new, uh, you know, at the time for someone, uh, like, making a horror movie. Uh, there's enough interesting stuff there that I guess made it an interesting watch. Um, but at the same time, like, there wasn't really a lot of stuff that was super in- engaging about it. Like I didn't really find the characters as interesting as, you know, like the characters from Blair Witch or something that would be, um, there wasn't as much like mythology or lore, um, that, you know, uh, was in it as much as like, you know, it- it's really hard not to compare it to, you know, Blair Witch, but that's kind of like the big thing since they're so close together and you kind of, you know, using like some of the same tricks and stuff. Uh, and obviously can't really talk about it till we uh get into you know spoilers but um the ending just didn't really do much for me like it, it wasn't very i like i guess i was surprised but not in like a good way that made me go like whoa that's really cool or something i would never have thought of it was just like a oh, okay that's what this is about fine <laughs> i guess um but like you said like there what there is like um a certain feel of like these kind of 90s like uh docudramas or, or or whatever when they're talking about like uh yeah like mysteries or disappearances that like i did have a little bit of nostalgia for it i guess from that lens um but yeah i, I mean i don't want to sound too harsh but i mean other than that i didn't think it was like that great <laughs> it's not the worst thing in the world but yeah well, what's funny is that i think I may be a little more positive just because I think the authenticity of what it was trying to feel like, I think mm-hmm. carries it quite a bit because mm-hmm. I was generally into like how it was conveying its information and sort of like building up to the idea, okay, maybe there's something, you know, horror related going on beyond just that there's a guy who maybe killed people. Uh, and I, I thought it presented that in a way something that all of the actors are necessarily amazing. There's some that are a bit iffy. You get away with a little bit of stuff like iffiness in the acting because it's like they're meant to be people who are being interviewed so they're not meant to know how to speak on camera so mm-hmm. some characters saying um and a lot or uh the one guy I, I think it was the like editor of their their cable show mm-hmm. must have said you know about 50 million times over the course <laughs> of this movie but I think it felt authentic enough and I got a sort of, because of the, 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 the tape, everything looking kind of grimy in 90s and it feeling obviously very of its time. Down to the, you know, and obviously it's because it was shot then, but it, you know, the fashion, the haircuts, everything about it really just felt like a very specific moment in time. And I kind of, <laughs> I appreciated that and it kind of carried me through a lot of it. I do have sure. to echo the sentiment though that the ending the last like five ten minutes whatever it is they they they, they you know they, they they tried something 
They, they, <laughs> they had an idea and they tried something yeah. and I don't think it works at all. And I can't tell you why. I can't even describe or give you a hint of what it is because I feel like any mm-hmm. sort of hint would spoil what actually happens at the end. Mm-hmm. So I will just not do that. But I will say it did yeah. not work for me. And I, I kind of still respect what they did with basically nothing. I mean, the, the budget listed oh, on sure. Wikipedia yeah. is $900. <laughs> which, oh, yeah. No, that's totally fair. <laughs> that, that's, that's shockingly good. The fact that it was giving me an atmosphere and a vibe and I was feeling mm-hmm. kind of into it a lot of the time on a budget of $900 is is very good. It's you know, that's, that's very impressive. And clearly there's some talent in here. But the actual story and how it wraps up, I would say, does leave a lot to be desired. Um, I I think, like, my big thing is I just wanted more of something. Like, you know, uh, like, it feels like the story is very bare, uh, which is, you know, not the worst thing in the world. But, like, you know, like, the found footage elements that they keep cutting back to, it seemed like there was so little of it. And, like, you know, a lot of times they would keep replaying, like, you know, the same... Uh, like, you know, one shot, like, over and over again. And, like, you know, it felt like they, we really weren't exploring the mystery, like, uh, like that well. Like, I kept waiting for maybe more, like, big reveal. <clears throat> Sorry, like, a, you know, like, some more big reveals or something shocking to kind of come up. And, um, yeah, I didn't really get that. But uh, to its credit, like, it did, like, I did kind of get, like, sucked into it um, for a lot of this, like, you know, reasons that what you are saying because of, like, you know, the time period that it's echoing and the, you know, authenticity of, like, what they're trying to recreate, like, uh, that did work for me. A lot of my problems kind of just came from, like, after the movie ended and just kind of being like, well, wait, that's it? Like, you know, not really yeah. feeling like, you know, there's a lot of resolution or that, like, you know, we didn't really explore, like, you know, the, the mystery enough or whatever. There's but, definitely some elements that it brings up that it, when I realized at the end that they never really brought them back up again, I was like, wait, there was more to do with, with these mm. particular things that you never really went back to. And that felt a bit weird to me. Maybe that's a cutting room floor thing. Uh, although that said, given how it ends, like one or two of them feel like, I don't know how they could have done more with that. But mm. I, I will say there's definitely other things baked into this that feel very of its time. I think the the fear of meeting something someone weird online which was a big thing in the 90s of like, oh, anyone you meet on the internet might be an axe murderer. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you yeah. can't talk to them. So when they're talking about, um, you know, uh, like uh, instant chat online, what was, was it? Uh, uh, IRC. IRC, that. thank you, that was it. Uh, when they're uh, talking it, about it, IRC, that that really stuck out to me. Is, oh, this is very <laughs> of its time, this fear of weirdos yeah. on the internet. <laughs> uh, it, it was kind of funny. Every time like they made, they... <clears throat> like would act like that's such like a big deal they're like and we're like having the broadcast like you know like all, also online like um which is so funny because it's just like yeah it, it's such like an easy thing to do now like everything is you know broadcast online i, I actually uh, i have two questions on this one mm-hmm. like did anyone broadcast something live on the internet in 1998 was that even a thing that was doable with the speeds at the time? And if, I mean, obviously if it was, it was going to be like 240p potato quality because, oh, yeah. you know, the, the internet speed wouldn't have been able to do anything else. And mm. But the more important question I had, and this was really bugging me, uh, was exactly, because there may have been broadcasting something live from the forest, and all I could think mm. was, but it's 1998, how are they... Oh like, yeah. <laughs> how is this little ragtag group like I get that like obviously actual news reporters and stuff could beam something live they've got vans with satellite mm. dishes on them and stuff but I was having a hard time believing that they could do it and that mm. it even mentions that one of them is on IRC like talking while they're in the woods mm-hmm. and I'm like this is kind of pre like 4G here like like I, I haven't done it but I'm tempted to actually tr- look up and see was there any form of like mobile mm. internet at all yeah. in 1998 because i don't feel that like there was but maybe someone will correct me and tell me that there was some rudimentary thing that you could do like uh it you know I, i'm sure there'd be <clears throat> like some way to do it but it would seem like it would be something that not a lot of people have access to do and you would really need to like you know pull some strings or have like some yeah. real crazy setup to do that yeah, because to put that in perspective, this is meant to be like two guys who make uh, a local access cable show that has no budget, mm-hmm. right? This is not some big network who's like on the cutting edge and doing something new. You know, that, 
like pay-per-view for example was something when it came out like it was it was only tried by like major sporting events and wrestling mm-hmm. events and it became more normal over time but it wasn't something that some small outfit tried first it was you know it was this thing where the original pay-per-views were 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 only available in movie theaters like they they, they broadcast oh, them really? to movie theaters and that's how you went and watched pay-per-views and this was a little <laughs> small this was a very small window in time before it became available at home but you know there was this kind of transition to it so i'm just i'm trying to imagine like because 1998 is kind of a weird time for me in my personal in history with the internet because mm-hmm. it's not a big a window in time really but there's a window in time where the internet was becoming more common but it's before i had it which is only a personal thing to me obviously mm-hmm. but anything before 2000 ish to me it's like oh man that's early internet days because that's before i had it that's like the that's like oh, the sure. infancy of the internet and that's not entirely yeah. true you know the, the infancy of the internet goes back a little bit further than that but um mm-hmm. so it's just wild to uh be like oh yeah we're going to live stream on the internet uh yeah. to the point where i don't even think the phrase live stream ever comes up which is what you'd call it now yeah i think they they call it just broadcasting on the internet yeah 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 <laughs> yeah whereas nowadays this would be on twitch <laughs> this would be this oh, yeah. would be twitch yeah. the twitch channel I mean, someone just do it with their phone or whatever <laughs> and there'd be chat going upside the, the video and mm-hmm. all the rest of it yeah yeah you could film it on a phone like all of us hold the technology in our pockets to live stream from mm-hmm. a forest assuming you get a signal which is you know yeah. <laughs> it's an f if you're in the middle of a forest but uh you, you you could live stream uh so yeah and maybe maybe everything i just said is complete nonsense maybe there was a way of doing it in 1998 but it did not mm-hmm. seem like these guys were at the cutting edge of technology and had access to expensive equipment yeah i mean it's i mean I, again i feel like you know we don't re- we really don't know that much about them like um yeah, if they were like you know super hardcore tech geeks or something mm-hmm. like i feel like it's not really evident from what we see see of them yeah, so that was interesting. I will say this: uh, the audio quality obviously is all over the place in the movie, but it kind of mm-hmm. worked for what it was trying to be, and uh, mm-hmm. it was trying to feel like it was all shot like off the cusp, and it's just all these various interview pieces and like you know crappy bits of footage that was shot. And when mm-hmm. I really noticed it early on, there's like a clip from when they're shooting like a, a part of their show to be broadcast, mm-hmm. and like the one so it's two hosts, and one guy's kind of like passing the mic back and forth as they're talking normally in like a a movie when you're doing a scene like this where you've got two people faking that they're on a tv show and they're passing a mic back and forth uh like that mic won't actually be recorded in earth and that's just for show they'll have a boom mic just like any other scene so that all the audio is clean and then they can manipulate it as much as they want in post in this scene in the movie in this movie that was the mic that was recording the audio because you could hear it. Yeah. it. It wasn't like an additional effect they put on it or they whatever. Mm-hmm. It it genuinely sounded like this was the mic they were using to record. And I, I, I say this with some level of experience of doing student productions and things like that and just knowing what it mm-hmm. sounds like when students don't point the mic in the right place. <laughs> right? You know, they'd have to like move, but mm-hmm. you, you wouldn't quite catch the first part of their sentence all that well because he hasn't moved the mic over yet and things like that but and i'm not complaining because i actually think this adds to the like i say authenticity of it just being these guys who aren't really that experienced or know what they're doing and they you know they kind of set up early on the backstory of this show they make and you know what they're like is in relation to making this show and it doesn't sound like they're perfectionists it sounds like Mm -hmm. one's just there because why not he's a friend of the other guy and like the main guy steven is you know, he he thinks this is his path to fame, but everyone thinks he's in over his head. It was kind of the gist of all the interviews. So, you know, it, 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 it fit what was going on, but it was something I noticed early on, which, yeah, I felt was worth mentioning. Yeah. <laughs> um, I do kind of wish we got uh, some more, like, snippets of their uh, show. Just because, like, I mean, <laughs> I, I used to love, you know, watching those kind of shows like anything to do with like the supernatural or paranormal or whatever uh, that would have been fun to see some more of that oh you mean like some of the regular episodes before they all went into the woods and died <laughs> yeah like obviously you know you don't you know you're not gonna watch like full episodes or whatever in a, in a movie but like you know just like what you know when they're establishing stuff to show like you know some different clips and stuff just to make it a little fun yeah it's kind of weird they didn't show more of that like just like an example of them talking about something else that was spooky on their show yeah. because 
you get a lot of like behind the scenes footage of them sitting around between takes and like setting stuff up on their show but you would think the footage that's the most readily available would be the footage they broadcast <laughs> because it was the yeah. actual finished product. But mm-hmm. you never actually get to see any of that, uh, really. So, because uh, you see a lot of the the stuff from what they're making now, you know, in the do- you know in the documentary what it's talking about, mm-hmm. like all the footage of the thing they were making when they died. You see like all mm-hmm. the early bits of that where they're like talking to the camera and you know mm-hmm. passing the mic back and forth and whatever, mm-hmm. you know. Yeah, we're going out yeah. to the woods, we're going out to the pines to find the Jersey Devil and blah, blah, blah. Which, like, which like, is even a thing that's like kind of weirdly like, you know, they don't even really talk about the Jersey Devil that much. Like, um, you know, again, if like you think of a song like the Blair Witch Project where, you know, you have that, those like great kind of, you know, first like 15, 20 minutes or whatever where they're interviewing people and learning about the legend uh, of it, like, yeah, it, and it would have been nice to maybe get like a little backstory. Like, uh, I I forget if they mentioned like why exactly they they were going after it, uh, or if it was just because like, hey, well, you know, <laughs> we're here, let's uh go do it. But oh no, know. they mentioned that there's a very particular mm-hmm. plot point as to why they're going after it. Okay, um, forgetting it already, <laughs> but <laughs> as we'll, we'll talk about it in spoilers. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, I just would have liked to. Uh, some some more mythology or, or something would have been cool to me. Yeah, no, I I get it. Uh, mm-hmm. Some some more uh, some more flavor, I guess. Is, <laughs> is, is, is what you wanted. Again, it's like yeah, probably sounding a little harsh, but I didn't hate the movie or anything. It was actually kind of fun to watch because, um, again, it just does take you back to like such a time and, you know, especially if you are like a fan of the genre and, and like a fan of found footage, like, you know, it's interesting to see something that's like a very early example, like, you know, even before something like Blair Witch, which is the you know kind of go to proto example that you know most people use. It's you know well, interesting Blair, to see something like this. Yeah, Blair Witch kind of established the format that most found footage movies use. Mm-hmm. You know, most are most are copying. I mean, that, that, that sounds harsh, but you know what I mean? Like most are yeah, t- yeah, using yeah. the format that Blair Witch kind of established. This is clearly a little bit different to that. And it's not the one that most are using, so it is, you know it's a worthwhile thing to to mention. Uh, yeah. yeah, if you really like found footage, this is definitely something from you know found footage history. You know the yeah the the progression through from early found footage to what it became mm-hmm. and is now. Uh, you know, I mean, and I will say this: I never once, and part of it's because it's broken up because it's mockumentary style, mm-hmm. but I never ever once like had that moment where I went. Why are they still filming? Sure. <laughs> never, never once. Like, but because of the way that it kind of like, oh, the footage just kind of ends at a certain point, and we have to speculate, and <laughs> there's a bit more to it than that. But it never feels like, oh, why are they still filming when they're running away? Because it, it it tries to obscure a lot of that more so than what a lot of modern found footage stuff does. Because the whole point is, is that yeah, it's a mystery. <laughs> they went out, and <laughs> at a certain point, there's just no more information. Uh, so. I kind of appreciate like tackling it from that perspective, even if that does mean you don't see as much. Mm-hmm. So I, I can appreciate parts of it, uh, but yeah. So yeah, I'm, I'm kind of mixed in the movie. I, I think there's some things that are very impressive for the type of movie it is, and for the budget that it had, and just mm-hmm. for the you know a group of people making a movie that yeah, all, all uh, that stuff is really cool. Yeah, I definitely yeah. applaud that. You know, at the time, the idea of doing a movie this independent, this low mm-hmm. budget, this you know pretty much i mean you know it sounds harsh to say amateur but you know that's kind of what it is it's a group of people saying let's go make an mm-hmm. amateur movie and it being as effective as it is is very impressive actually mm-hmm. did you notice in the uh the credits that almost everyone in the movie their name is very close to their real name i know it's like a lot of times like they would have the same first name or yeah and then like some of them it's just a different spelling yeah like um was a good so yeah like the guy who's accused of killing the other three Jim uh, Seward mm-hmm. like he's got the exact same name it's just a different spelling whereas <laughs> like in the movie it's S-U-E-R-D is Seward but in real life his name is S-E-W-A-R-D <laughs> so it's just, it's just a different spelling but it's just, you know you'd say it the same way Interesting. Uh, and there's, a, there's a, a lot of the same first names uh, and things like that so um, I, I, I guess that was just them like Ah, oh, just in case we slip and call you by your name or something. Yeah, <laughs> like it's covered. It's the same person. That makes it easy. Yeah, like to, 
and make it feel a little more natural that you're not like oh wait what's your character's name again or whatever like yeah so i guess we'll get to spoilers and we'll we'll talk about it um a bit more so full spoilers for the last broadcast from this point forth you have been warned do we start with the ending since it's the thing that we probably really want to talk about Sure. <laughs> <Just go right laughs> <there>. <laughs> I mean, we can go by and talk about everything else, obviously. Yeah. But I, the I, I feel like the ending is the big thing because mm. so the, the part that I need to set up here is that so all the footage that was collected from the the crime scene that they filmed on that night, um, and we see parts of it throughout the movie is shown to us, and it was used mm. in the case for the the prosecution when they were trying to convict Jim Stewart of, of killing uh, the other three. It was used in the trial. So they, the court had an editor put all the footage together and some parts of it were pretty incriminating. And we see a lot of that through the film. The guy making the documentary, right, who's narrating, who we see at the start, and then we mostly just hear him narrating throughout the film. About halfway through or something, he reveals that someone has sent him a mysterious box of just tape. Like, they're not like in... And we're not talking in cassettes. We're talking just like reels of tape that are all just all over the place. <laughs> And he takes it to a like a, a video reconstruction specialist who's going to try mm. and re put it together, uh, restore it, and get some images that we can actually look at off of it. And some of it's better condition than others, so we get some quick clips of like, oh, this is clearly right after they swapped the tapes, and here's just some more mm -hmm. lighthearted stuff with the characters talking or whatever. Uh, but then there's some like fuzzier stuff, and it's like every so often it goes back to her, and it's like, okay, I've done this bit now, and oh, this kind of mentions a certain time, which kind of proves that part of what the court were saying was false, um, so on mm -hmm. and so on. But there's like a really fuzzy image of like what is probably the killer, because it's like, mm -hmm. okay, this is like, the, they look scared right before it stops here. Uh, this is really distorted, but if I can keep maybe clearing this up, maybe we can eventually get an image of who's on the tape. And it keeps showing you it with slightly more restored, like every so often in the last like half hour. Mm -hmm. And there was a certain point where I kind of went, you know, that looks like it could be the guy making the documentary. That, that was like a, a, a thought I had. Not too, like, not too early. It was, you know, maybe like the second to last time you see it. It was like, hmm, mm. that kind of looks like that dude. Mm. And the twist of the movie is that it is that dude. And that the guy making the documentary is the killer and is behind all of it. And it switches to th third person. Like, or actually, the better way to put it is that it switches from the documentary, mockumentary, slash found footage style to just third person normal movie for the last like 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. And when he goes into the... That's ed what really bugged me. <laughs> well, well, we'll get to it. But when he goes into yeah. the, the editor's place that has reconstructed mm -hmm. all this stuff, she's just seen it like properly reconstructed and is scared and he kills her and he wraps her up in plastic. Uh, wrapped in plastic! That's the twin <laughs> reference for anyone. Uh, which... Honestly, my first question here is why was this room already completely surrounded in plastic? Oh, she's a video restoration specialist. Is that is that what it's for? Was it something to do with like <laughs> like blocking out light because it hurts the tape or something? I don't know. Um, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> like, I'm just it, guessing. It, it was like Dexter Morgan had already like arranged his crime scene, but that was, this was her place. This was her office, so that yeah. didn't really make much sense to me. But whatever. Um. <laughs> So it switches to regular film uh, style and he rolls her up. He records some more of his documentary and we actually realise that some of the stuff that we've been seeing for the last like 10, 15 minutes from him was after he's already done this. You know, because we mm -hmm. see him like, he's basically recreating the trip where he drives out to the woods and he's doing like a little bit on camera where he says, I'm here where they, you know, camped that night and he says mm -hmm. some stuff. And we realize, so the actual end of the movie is seeing that again from the perspective of like a third person shot, like a regular movie where this dead body of this woman's on the ground as he's talking to the camera, right? And then that's the end of the movie. Um, so that's the twist is that he is the killer. He's the one who lured them out there. He killed the other guys and he's now obsessively making this movie about it. Um, so you you said you hated that it switched to real film. That's that's some, you jumped in with that there. Yeah, uh, <laughs> that would be the most uh, annoying part for me. I don't necessarily mind uh, the idea that the guy that's making the documentary is the killer. Um, I wouldn't say 
I, maybe at the time it might have been more interesting, but I don't know. Like, um, the twist just wasn't like a huge like, oh my god, like shocking moment to me. But uh, yeah, it, it just really annoys me that it just switches from you know the whole movie has been either you know showing found footage clips or doing this documentary style. Uh, so just to completely break that, like, uh, it just really bugged me. Here's I'm I'm going to disagree with you slightly. Just in, I don't actually mind the idea of it. I don't mind the mm -hmm. idea of switching to real movie, for lack of a better term. Uh, when you have this twist, and the mm -hmm. idea that now we're seeing stuff because we've revealed who the killer is, now we don't obscure it. Because, because mm -hmm. in in a way, everything up until that point in the movie is from his like warp perspective. Because he want mm -hmm. he's making this movie for other people, so we're all seeing mm -hmm. things through whatever like the way he looks at everything. Like he's made this, he's edited this everything's like his viewpoint of this thing that he is constructing so that we feel a certain way about everything going on right mm -hmm. he's creating this mystery and he, wa he wants us to feel unnerved he wants us to obsess over it he's kind of creating a like a a, a mythical quality about something he did without ever mm -hmm. revealing that he did it mm -hmm. i have no problem with at that point it turning into a real movie my problem with this and a big reason why it didn't work for me is that once it turns into, again, quote-unquote, real movie, is that all of a sudden, it felt really cheap. Because now oh, sure. you're not being authentic to this, you know, cheap cable program that you're trying to recreate. Now you mm. look like an absurdly cheap actual movie. And that, yeah. actually, that took me out of it way more than anything else. Because... That's now, point, yeah. now I'm watching something that looks like a straight to video, like poorly lit, poorly shot. Mm -hmm. You know, it's trying to. You know, it it looks like something that someone made for YouTube in like 2006 or something. You know, <laughs> like, it has that mm -hmm. kind of like uh, shouldn't movie quality to it, and it mm -hmm. really took me out of it. I, I was into kind of everything to a certain point, and then when it switched to this, it was like all of a sudden this looks really, really poor and bad, and mm -hmm. I think. Everything up until that point was very inventive in how it made, like, what they, the type of equipment they had on offer, the type of uh, skill they had. It was all making the most of what they had. And then this last, like, 10 minutes flips it, and all of a sudden, it's not making the most of what they have. It's reaching too far with what they have, and it's now mm. I'm just noticing, oh, this is a really cheap movie, and this last five minutes or whatever just doesn't work for me as a result. And, you know, also... The twist itself's a little, like, I, I don't necessarily mind the idea of the twist, but mm -hmm. it doesn't necessarily, I think, excite me all that much because there's still parts of it. You know, the, the guy who was accused of killing the others, uh, Jim Seward, like, mm -hmm. he mysteriously died in prison. and Yeah, they never tell you, like, how, right? No. Just that he died. Because he, he mentions that, like, quite early on, and I thought, oh, when we mm -hmm. get to that part, because it sort of, like, summarizes some of it at the start, and then it starts getting into more detail. And I thought, oh, when we mm -hmm. get to that part in more detail later... It's going to explain at least like how why it was mysterious, you know, like you mm -hmm. know how how he was found. It couldn't have been suicide for this reason, but they never even like really bring it up. They just say this is when he died in prison, and mm -hmm. at, least, at the very least, we know that like the main guy who turns out to be the killer couldn't have done it because he's well, the guy was in prison. What, what did he do? Sneak yeah. into <laughs> prison and sneak back out? Like he didn't do that. <laughs> so you know, there's elements like that that aren't quite there. Um. You know, so but like the idea that he's maybe trying to like convince the audience through his documentary that there is a Jersey Devil and the Jersey Devil killed these men, uh, is you know slightly like an interesting idea, you know. Okay. Uh, and the idea that because because he he does monologue a bit towards the end about how like this documentary is becoming part of the story of the murders and. You know, th this this videotape and footage is, is part of the story. So it is trying, it's, it's starting to get into the theme of like, you know, capture what you capture on film and what you broadcast over the internet and video is being part of the story of anything that happens and kind mm -hmm. of immortalizing it on videotape and stuff like that. And, you know, it obviously makes sense he'd be obsessed with that, being that he's doing this and that, he, you know, he's, he's killed these guys like this. So... Like, I don't think conceptually it's, it's a bad idea necessarily, but the way it is in the story, there's just... It, I, I don't think it's set up enough where it felt too satisfying, and I also think there's a lot of elements of the mystery that aren't explained. Like, for example, 
one of the things that's brought up early on, one of the, the big bits of evidence that the police had against uh, Jim Seward is that they found specks of the other guy's blood on his shirt in, uh, like in his house, right? They found the shirt he was wearing that night and it had some dabs of blood and they're really small dabs of blood. Uh, and they said, oh, he's got blood of the victims on him, right? One, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense because you'd have way more blood than that on him. But the real thing that I'm bringing up here is that, okay, nothing from, like, the recollection we hear of the, the crime and, like, how he was found because he hitchhiked away and he said... Because you hear his phone call to the police. You hear Jim's phone call to the police saying, I, you know, I was with the other guys and I can't find them. We went up to do this project in the woods and I can't find them anymore. I've hitchhiked back to, like, civilization and whatever. It doesn't sound like he found bodies. It doesn't sound like he actually ever, at any point, ever encountered uh, the others. It also doesn't sound like he was ever asleep so that, you know, the killer could have, like, sprinkled some blood on him or something. Mm. So my question is, is how did that blood from the other victims get onto Jim's clothes? Because, the, you know, it, it sounds like he never actually encountered the bodies or realized that they were in, like, grave danger. He just left yeah. and called the police from a distance. <laughs> yeah, that's... Uh... Yeah. <laughs> earlier on I was thinking oh it's something supernatural because of the Jersey Devil so I'll mm -hmm. just go with it but then when it revealed the ending no it's just this guy <laughs> I was like well all of a sudden then that you know I, I can't just blame the supernatural side for that unless you're yeah. going to go along with the idea that he's been possessed by the Jersey Devil there is the supernatural thing as well but yeah. I don't know yeah it's a bit of a stretch <laughs> bit of a leap bit of a leap unless <sighs> like I don't know if he knew where his house was and went back and put the blood on there or something. I don't know. But, I mean, even that, that's like, you know, yeah, you're, you're doing a lot of work for something that, you know, probably, you know, should have been explained or at least mentioned in the movie. It just, it just never quite lined up. It, it, but it's sort of thing where what I would hope is that when you get to this twist and you think back about it, it just clicks like, oh, that, it makes sense now yeah. because <laughs> clearly he's just lied about it or something. But no, this was police evidence. <laughs> it was stuff people yeah. in interviews <laughs> talked about. It was, you know, it was, it was there. You can't just hand wave it away with a simple explanation. So, uh, you know, so that's like a frustrating detail, uh, I would say. Um, I did like, you know, like, they, they set up this idea early on that, um, the idea to go out here, this is the thing you seem to have forgotten, <laughs> is that uh, they asked because, on... Because, like, the, the internet guy kept bringing it up? Well, yeah, they asked on their show for ideas, to, like, for to do mm -hmm. episodes on, and some guy in the chat said, you should do an episode on the Jersey Devil. That's right, yeah. Right? Yeah. And, mm -hmm. uh, and also, later on, they say that they can't trace that. It's impossible, because it's not, like, a phone number. And I'm like, mm -hmm. I don't know, IP addresses are a thing. This doesn't sound that untraceable to me. But... I'm going to chalk that up to this being 1997 when they're shooting this and that they probably don't mm. understand like certain things on the internet the way that most people do now. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, that, that, that feels like to me like just someone who doesn't know uh, enough. <laughs> uh, yeah, especially if it's just like some guy at like a local TV station or something like you're not dealing with like some big tech guy or something yeah yeah uh it, it, yeah it just it was that was one of those things that rang really falls for me and i'm like I, this may just be because people wouldn't know that at the time so whatever but the um so they sell this mystery that they were lured out there and that you know if it wasn't jim that killed them although they even speculate that jim was the one who'd sent that message and maybe he wanted mm -hmm. to lure them out there uh but yeah so that, that does a bit of intrigue there because they, sp they spent a lot of the early time kind of talking about how the he, how Jim was painted as like a loner who loved the internet and he loved magic and he liked playing tricks. And, <laughs> and now uh, I also forget this though. So why exactly did they bring him along? Well, because he claimed he was psychic and that he would like lead them right, to like, the best that. spot to like encounter okay. the Jersey Devil. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. <laughs> <laughs> well, because they show him having That's... that psychic fit where the date of the trip, like, burns into his arm and shit. That was cool. Like, I wanted more kind of, like, weird or, or mysterious stuff like that that we could kind of explore. Because, uh, yeah, I, I thought, like, those, like, little moments uh, when, yeah, before, like, they're out in the woods when they're at his house or whatever, and he has, like, the numbers appear and he's having, like, those freakouts and stuff. Like, 
it would have been interesting to see like more of that stuff uh or you know so, at least something else that you could kind of explore yeah i mean obviously the the narrator speculates that you know this could be real but he's also a magician and this could actually just be a trick yeah. that he's playing on them to get the job or convince them that he's like authentic mm-hmm. and that makes some sense especially given the twist it's like yeah he probably was just doing this to like, impress them yeah yeah that, that, that makes a makes lot sense. yeah that makes that makes sense that makes reason obviously and yeah. in, in the the prosecution it's described as being like a look this is evidence that he was luring them out there this is evidence mm-hmm. that he wanted to go there you know, they, they mm-hmm. might, I swear they replay the little clip where he pushes the guy and says, I'll yes. see you back at camp. Uh, like, And the way he says it is like, kind of funny, <laughs> too. <laughs> like, cause he's like, I'll see you back at camp, man. <laughs> the prosecution says, oh, this is proof that he's, he's, he can be violent. <laughs> and I'm like, look, yeah. he's been a bit of a dick, but it's, just, it's a shove. <laughs> and he did, and, and to be fair, he did, like, they did egg him on. Like, they asked him, like, oh, are you, like, a psychic or psycho or something? Like, you know, they are making fun of him first. Yeah, you get the impression that as the day goes on on this trip that they're they're kind of mm-hmm. getting tired of him. They think he's a bit of a, a fluke and a flake. A fluke and a flake. Uh, a bit of both. Uh, but the, the evidence, like, in his favour, though, in Jim's favour to say that he didn't do this is that he was apparently sitting on his laptop uh, chatting to people on the internet the entire mm-hmm. time and uh the that seems to be true although there's a 45 minute gap in two of his comments which uh it seems a bit unrealistic he could run about to where all the bodies were found and kill them all in that time yeah (laughs) but you know that's what they go with but of course one of the one of the big bits of evidence from the 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 spooky tape you know the one that comes in late Mm -hmm. is that there's footage on that tape of two of the guys still alive after they were Mm -hmm. supposed to be dead like the murder happened a bit later than mm. was was speculated and like worked out with all the other forensics mm. so yeah i mean this is all details though like, i feel like the last like 10 minutes of this conversation i've just been regurgitating like all these weird details of the, <laughs> of the case uh which yeah. which is fine and it's part of the fun of watching the movies and it's, it's giving you these little details and it's, it's making you think about them and showing the contradictions and there's a lot of opportunities to like be inventive with that because it's like well it's not real so we can like construct the perfect you oh, know yeah, yeah. stuff that like seems like it's going one way but then you like, bring it oh here's a smoking gun for the other side and mm-hmm. you know this doesn't quite make sense and you know stuff like oh right before he died like the you know what was his name uh locus he he looks <laughs> like he's terrified he's you know he doesn't look he recognizes whoever he's looking at it looks like he's just scared mm-hmm. Uh, maybe it's something monstrous that's after him. Because uh, mm-hmm. I was actually thinking before they speculated this on the movie that um, that because two of the bodies are found and the third one's never found, but they just find some of his blood. And mm-hmm. I was thinking maybe that maybe, maybe the, the third guy is the killer. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, and he just disappeared. You know, maybe he's the one who killed them and disappeared. Uh, but there's eventually evidence that kind of dispels that as well and says no, it couldn't have really been for this reason and that reason. Uh, you know, evidence points to it being someone that the other two don't recognize, someone different, if not a monster outright. <laughs> but yeah, uh, I don't know. That's, uh, I think. <sighs> no, on you go, Tom. On you go. On you go. Uh, I'll throw a question out to you. Like, do you think that we get enough of the narrator, like in the, you know, let's say first half of the movie or so, to to kind of justify him? Like, you know, ending up being such a, you know, big pivotal part of the movie. Um, Because I feel like, I don't know, at least to me, like, it didn't really feel like he was much of a character. Like, a lot of the times I forgot, like, oh, yeah, there's a narrator here until, like, you know, towards the end when Mm -hmm. we actually start seeing his face and stuff. And then, like, then he actually felt like more of a character to me. Oh, Um, I don't know if you think it should have been maybe more seated throughout that he's a bigger part of this or something. I, well, I would never say that I forgot there was a narrator because he is constantly narrating. He like mm. he, he never really stops. But I would agree that more reinforcement of his face and m- maybe just to suggest the mm. idea that this is something of like a you know maybe like a project he's doing. Yeah, like something he no. really cares about, and it's because when you have a narrator, obviously they might care about what they're doing, right? But the, the, this narrator who's speaking all in the third person and presenting the facts very ominously. 
intentionally is kind of uh, omnipotent in the way it sounds. Yeah. And I think maybe what it could have used more in terms of personality for him is like when he's going to interview other people, maybe show like him like Joe. You know, Joe you know at the end, he's doing like little vlog moments on his own where he's mm-hmm. saying, "Hey, I'm out here and I'm you know about to look into this and blah blah blah," or "I'm about to go see this footage for the first time." Maybe more of that early on, mm-hmm. where it's like before he interviews like the the guy who's going to direct the show, like say, "Okay, I'm here and I'm about to interview this guy." Mm-hmm. And he's important to the case for this reason, and I'm excited to talk about. It. Maybe, maybe like put in some more of like those just, little snippets. Yeah, like just to remind you that this is like a real person, like an actual character, and not just yeah the person that the voice know, is chiming in from time to time. Yeah, because like, I I shouldn't have said that. Like yeah, I forgot that there's a narrator from time to time, but I just meant more kind of like you're saying that, like um, yeah, it, it's just like the you know the the narrator. It's not like. You're not thinking of it as an actual character, and um, yeah. So, it, so I was like kind of surprised towards the end when they started like, yeah, actually showing his face and stuff, and then and maybe that should have been kind of the first clue of like, all right, well, maybe there's something up with this guy or whatever. Well, but, I, I thought they were shifting to him being more of a character because when he's doing the reenactment before it like shows you it the second time where you you mm-hmm. see, you've seen him kill the person and you've seen his face in the footage, when he's just going out to the woods the the first time you see it, you know, you're thinking to yourself. Oh wait, this is um like something spooky is going to happen to him out here. So he's he's, he's going to be like the next victim. That's how the movie's going to end. Is that he's oh, going yeah, to be yeah. the next victim because he's been out here? And instead, and don't get me wrong, I get what the ending is doing by like showing you him make this trip, showing you him talking to the camera, and then seeing it again from the perspective. Here's him messing up and doing like bad takes as he has a dead body mm-hmm. at his feet. The idea being that what you see on the camera is always like obscured it's always just a little window Mm. of what the person recording wants you to see and that the truth is outside of that Mm. the truth is on the ground in front of them so i think there is a clear narrative intent and like a sort of thematic idea that is presented at the end Mm. by showing you his like you know perfectly edited version first where he's doing the hey i'm out in this location and this is where they spent the night and he's doing the spooky Mm. voice and it's like you know and he looks over at one point as if he hears something. It's like, oh, could that be the Jersey Devil? He doesn't say that, but that's kind of the moment he's doing mm-hmm. when he looks over. But then you see it again, and it's like, here's the reality of it. Here's what he was hiding the whole time, like just outside of the frame. Here's, mm-hmm. you know, so there's the 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 thing you create in the frame, and then there's the real world. I mean, to to actually give it a little bit of credit, you could almost look at this as like a... You, you could retroactively look at this and sort of apply it to like social media and like the image that a person wants to make of themselves like here's the images that i'm going to put up on instagram and the tweets that i'm going to Mm -hmm. make that paint a picture of a personality that i want to say that i am to the world Mm -hmm. but then in reality your flaws the other things you do when you're angry or you're upset or your little quirks that maybe you don't want people to know about but obviously heightened to the idea that that, you know you're a brutal serial killer (laughs) yeah yeah so yeah there's those are interesting ideas. I just think the last five minutes just looks like such a crappy direct-to-video, no-budget movie <laughs> that I, I just it pulled me out of everything that it was doing, and the transition didn't work. I think the transition can work, and I've even seen it done a bit better in one or two other mm. movies. But I don't think it works here, sadly. Um, and also, I felt like the, the woman he suffered... Because he suffocates her with the plastic. The... Yeah, did that that scene felt like it went on for a while. It went on for ages, and it felt like when he recorded a little bit of dialogue, you know, he, he, he mm. pieced the camera, he held the camera in his face, mm. and he talked a little bit about he was about to make this trip. It felt like just after he did that, like, she started moving a little bit, and he had to just, like, mm. re-suffocate her just a touch. <laughs> yeah. Like, I yeah. thought it was a mistake at first that she wasn't meant to be moving, <laughs> but it was like, no, no, she's, like, sort of gaining consciousness slightly. And he's like, oh, shit, she's <laughs> not dead yet. I better uh, take care of that. I was getting a little worried because of like, you know, it, it is so like low budget and like, you know, uh, you know, the, the quality is not that great that I'm like, Oh, like I hope they took like proper precautions and they're not just like, Oh you know, yeah. <laughs> actually suffocating <laughs> someone and be like, Oh, don't worry about it. Like, well, yeah, we'll, we'll give you enough time in between takes or something. But I will say, you know, I will say this on the ending is that it does make me mm. curious to rewatch it at some point knowing the entire mm. time. Because if if the idea is, sure. is that, our, our, if, that our documentary filmmaker and narrator is unreliable and he's trying to create a certain like narrative through his story, 
it would be maybe interesting to watch it again with that knowledge and see like if there's like signs of like what he's hiding or signs of like this aura he's trying to create that's not mm-hmm. really there you know there, there, there could be something to that if, if it holds up That'd on a second viewing uh yeah. so you know like i, I think that there genuinely is some good ideas in this there's genuinely oh, for sure yeah like a nice idea to, to to play with the concept of what you capture and what parts of that are intended to be seen because mm-hmm. uh, even when they're shooting the you know the main crew that all die when they're shooting stuff they even talk about how is that they're recording still between takes just by accident or because they don't really care or whatever and it's like oh this is a window into like between the takes the the, the persona the on-camera persona and then the real people between takes when they're making fun of the weird one you know he's a bit of a psycho <laughs> like you know he's a bit weird um that's you know an interesting theme to roll with and then the idea that that's like it then gets bigger and it's no the entire mockumentary is made by the serial killer and it's a a completely fabricated not i mean not that all the details are false but it's a very construed through a specific lens to like make us biased towards a a certain viewpoint kind of thing yeah you know it's um Jeez, it's been so long since I've seen it, but was is Henry Portrait of a Serial Killer? Is that found footage too, kind of? No, they they film a couple of their crimes and watch them back later, but it's not. It's mostly okay. just a. It's mostly just a, a film, you know, a normal film. Okay, yeah, it's been forever since I've seen it, so I forgot if like the angle was that they were like following a serial killer. Um, maybe I think of a different movie. Like, cause I, you, I think you think like, the rise of Leslie Vernon? No, 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 no. Um, this might be way out there, but uh, do you know what that movie was? Is it, is it Man Bites Dog? Is that? I've heard of. I've not seen it. Is that what that movie is about? I don't know. It's, <laughs> uh, I haven't even seen it, so maybe uh, I'm. Totally getting the uh, a different movie. You're just spitting um, random different things at me. <laughs> possibly, but I'm pretty sure there there was a, a movie though where it's like a film crew is following a like a serial killer around, and it's supposed to kind of be like a thing. But it just made me th- think of it because when you said the phrase like the oh yeah the serial killer is making the the documentary or whatever, I was like oh yeah wasn't there another movie that it kind of did that? Not to say it's a rip off at all or anything, it just no, no, no. connected those things in my brain. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's the sad part, is that I actually kind of like the twist and that I can see what it's supposed to be mm-hmm. and how it's supposed to feel, and I think it just doesn't quite nail it. It's the execution that's the problem, rather than the idea itself, which is a, is a shame, because now if any other movie does this exact same twist, it's just going to be, well, you're just doing the last broadcast. Well, yeah, but is mm-hmm. it doing it better? Because it could be doing it better. Sure. Uh, there's room for improvement here. But at the same time, it's kind of a little movie that could kind of situation where I, I can appreciate the uh, the can do attitude and the kind oh, of the, yeah. you know the just the the you know because it, it's two directors and it's the directors uh, who pl- are also in the movie they play Stephen uh, and Locus who are two of the the three that are killed on in the main group they're like the hosts of the yeah public yeah, they, access show they're the hosts of the show so you, you get the feeling that you know this was very much mm-hmm. like a group of friends making a movie together and you know so. So someday it's... we'll make a movie. <laughs> yeah, so, someday. It'll be <laughs> called The First Broadcast. Ooh, pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, so... Yeah, I don't... I, I, I want to be kind of nice to the movie because I actually think it, you know, it tries to be a lot sure. of things. It's got some really <laughs> cool ideas and it does a lot with what it has. I just think there's some choices that maybe you know, could have tightened the story up, maybe made it <laughs> a bit more interesting... And certainly, I think the last... I, I think if they were... This is going to sound weird to say, but I think with the idea they had for the 10-minute the, the, the ending, I think <laughs> you make the rest of the movie and then you show it to a studio and say, give us actual money to make the last five minutes, please. <laughs> sure. so, that we, so that we can actually get a proper cinematographer and we can get like professional-level equipment. Because I think the last five minutes actually looking like a real cinematic movie mm. could make it work. Mm-hmm. Maybe? I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> it's just, it's, I don't know. Uh, maybe some people disagree with our takes on this. Like, I suspect some people probably love this. Like, some people probably do hold this in high esteem. 
I'm sure. Um, no, I mean, it's, yeah, I, I think there's a lot that you can applaud the movie for. And uh, again, it's like, you know, the, um, it, 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 I don't know, it kind of feels like, like an artifact, <laughs> like of a movie, you know, because it's like so mm. perfectly, in, you know, uh, in place in this time and doing something like that's, you know, like right at the edge of like this kind of thing. Um, I mean, it... at the start of the movie, they refer to these all these young men as being the, the generation of the digital age, which is really funny <laughs> to hear in 2023 because it feels ancient yeah. to us now. But yeah, oh, at yeah. the time, computers and like working with digital equipment was, was kind of a new big thing and would have felt like yeah. the cutting edge, yeah. But no, I mean, I do think it's worth watching. You know, it is, uh, you know, um, there's like there's like a lot of promise there, and uh, you know, and it's only like eighty six minutes or so. Like it's not like, you know, it's like a chore to watch or anything. And especially if you have like a certain age, um, I think you'll get some nostalgia for it. Or I mean, maybe even if you're a young person, it might be kind of cool to watch to be like, oh, hey, look how, yeah, you know, like things used to be. But um, yeah, it's a shame that it's not like just a little bit tighter so that it could be like remembered in the same breath as like, you know, Blair Witch or something mm. that it's, you know, it, it's not quite up to that level, which is kind of a shame. Yeah. Uh, you know, I've clicked on one of the directors here to see if they've done much else and they've done a couple of things since, but nothing I've heard of. It looks maybe made for TV and made for video. It, it doesn't seem like they've went on to have like a big career in the, uh, mm -hmm. The ratings on IMDb for these other projects look quite low as well, so uh. it, it doesn't seem like they've went on to have a, you know, a, I, but even this movie doesn't have a high rating though, like this has got a 5.2 in IMDb, I think the Rotten Tomato score is at mm. 50%, so it's very in the middle, it's very divisive, yeah. some people don't like it, some people do, but... Because I had seen like horror people on Twitter like sort of bring this up and say they liked it before, so... Well, I mean, and, that's you know, one of the reasons why I wanted to do it is because it's not just like some random movie that was like, hey, should we check this out? It's like, oh, like this is something that, yeah, it's not, it's not like super well known or anything. But yeah, I've had, I've heard people talk about it as well, especially like I was watching a documentary about found footage that I, th I think that documentary is on Shutter as well. Um, I think unless it was uh, somewhere else, but, mm. uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, uh, obviously it got brought up like, yeah, during that documentary too. So, um, yeah, it's it's certainly you know something that, you know, as it has its place in history and, you know, yeah, it has probably had some influence on you know certain people and stuff. So it's definitely worth checking out if you're like a horror historian or something. Or yeah, and just... you'll notice that I didn't go through the movie in order with this one, and part of that is because I think it'd be quite hard because the way it kind of like brings mm -hmm. up some stuff and then moves on and then goes back to the previous stuff and reveals more makes it very hard to sort of do in order and remember the actual sequence of information because a lot of it kind of goes back and forth so yeah. uh, hard to kind of like grasp the structure of it o other than just like him going to recreate the trip and then the twist being the last you know 20 minutes of the movie uh you know i would say the rest of it splits into like there's a lot of it presenting like the events as it's reported and like the criminal conviction of the guy accused and then it switches to but here's all the evidence against what the state were saying. And you yeah. let's discount each of them one by one. And then it gets into, you know, towards the ending stuff. But, um, yeah, I, I guess we should rate it, Timmy. What were you given the last broadcast? Um, yeah, it definitely feels like a little harsh to, like, say something. Like, uh, some of the, you know, other reviews you're mentioning being about five is, uh, I feel like a little too harsh, um... But I'm not going to go, like, super high either, though. So I think I'm going to give it a six. Um, you know, it was an easy watch. Uh, it was an enjoyable watch. It's something that I'm glad, you know, that uh, we finally got the chance to check out again just from, uh, you know, someone that loves the horror genre who loves the found footage genre. Um, you know, it, it was nice to be able to check it off and be like, oh, okay, yeah, this is uh, one we finally got. Um, but, yeah, unfortunately, there's just uh, a few things here and there that, you know, uh, that I, I feel like it could have used to really bump it up uh, to the next level. Um, but yeah, I mean, I'm still, I'm, I'm glad I watched it. I watched it though. I, you know, it's, uh, <laughs> I enjoyed my time with it. Yeah, I'm kind of similar. I might even go a little notch higher and say 6.5 and mm -hmm. that it's just shy of being good. I think the ending's quality 
and like how it's shot uh <laughs> it's fine in theory but this doesn't look good enough that it's whether that's just down to the equipment that we're using whether that was down to just the skill of the people involved not knowing how to make it look like a proper movie mm. <laughs> is you know whatever it may be <laughs> i i just don't think the ending uh quite works but um it does have a nice vibe and atmosphere for a lot of it it's you know creating mm. a very specific mood from a very specific time and i think it ha- does that for most of the movie quite well so mm. there's definitely avenues they could have went down that they didn't but i think i'll say 6.5 i, I think the, just for the, the feeling of it i, I think it's wor- commendable f- for what it is mm-hmm. so there you go uh that is the last broadcast just a, a fun little standalone review um so hopefully you've been enjoying what we've been banking for this uh you know i mean tim's baby should be popped out by now by the time this airs hopefully (laughs) otherwise the sake of my wife yeah (laughs) yeah otherwise it's a very late birth uh but yeah so hopefully you've been enjoying these episodes uh we got more exorcist movies coming up uh we got some other stuff coming up uh including I don't know. I may have put it earlier. Maybe I'll put it up further in the, like, you know, up front in the queue. But I know we're doing Skin of a Rink soon, which mm-hmm. is obviously a very other unique film, uh, mm-hmm. from what I've heard of it. So, uh, looking forward to doing that. But that, that we may have already put that out by the time you get this. I don't know. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah. So, thank you for watching. Thank you for joining us for Screams After Midnight. You can, of course, support all the content over at patreon.com slash TV and get all the access to the back catalogue of bonus episodes and even more streams. You know, they're on pause just now while Tim's on paternity leave, but uh, there's a nice big back catalogue to check out. Or you can give us a super thanks on YouTube as a one-time thing <laughs> if you prefer. Uh, all those things do help us out a lot. I will thank our Patreon producers. <laughs> for the month so thank you very much to tyler hess and the palaces david sharp board now christopher moy david brown and al tribesman thank you very much to you all and to all of our patrons uh for support oliver <laughs> the show no there's no one named oliver oh i thought you were thinking someone named all of our patrons <laughs> all of our patrons okay gotcha is that better for you timothy <laughs> it helps yeah I think we should go out to the woods and do a documentary on some mythical thing. <laughs> you know, I'm done. Mm-hmm. I, I, I thrive in the woods. Then I can blame the, the, the Sasquatch on your demise. <laughs> oh, demise, wait. <laughs> <laughs> Walk back to civilization with Tim's blood all down my arms. Oh, I lost him. I tried to save him. But I couldn't, I couldn't help it. Yeah. There, there isn't a court alive that <laughs> wouldn't have you uh, <laughs> sentenced by by dawn. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I think they'd watch a few episodes of Screams after midnight and realize, you know mm. what? Even if he did it, he was probably justified. Oh, I'm a beloved <laughs> American icon. <laughs> 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 oh, dear. Yeah, I don't know why I'm saying that. That's the sort of joke I'd usually say about Connor. It's just because the movie presented it. <laughs> <laughs> but hey ho this is this has been the show thank you very much for joining us everyone this has been screams after midnight keep watching scary movies and we will see you next time